In this video we're going to look at the edit box, the text area and the combo box. Now for some of the items that we're going to start looking at from here on out, they have certain features that you'll be able to use. They also have extra features that you could use if you did some back-end programming. And that's a little bit beyond what we do in Year 7. So for some of these items, we actually won't be using them to their full potential, but you still can use the basic features of them. So to start with, I'm going to use the edit box, which I will find on the right-hand side of my toolbar. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click and drag it to my page. I'm going to make it a decent size. Now to edit that, as always, I right click and go to Object Properties. Now I can give it a name, and the name would be what I could talk to with this item if I was to do some programming, and we'll see that pop up a lot. The initial value means what will already be in there when we open the page. So if I leave this blank, that box will remain blank when we look at the page. However, I could set some text in here that will show up straight away. So I'm going to say this text will appear. I can set a maximum length that can be typed into this box. So if I want it to be unlimited, I'll leave it at zero. If I only want, let's say, 50 characters, I could type in 50. I then have the option to say, is this a password field, yes or no? If we say yes, and we did some programming, we could set this up to type into this as a password, which would then give us access to something else. Once I'm happy with what I've set up, I'm going to go to the style. And here I can change all my style options that we've been working with the last few videos. I can change my border, I can make it thicker, change the color, I can change the background of the box, I can make it transparent, and transparent pretty much just means that it's see-through. I can change the color of the font, the style of the font, and the size. So once I press OK, you'll notice the text box, so the edit box takes the new appearance and that text is automatically there. Now when I preview it, I'm able to click inside the box and start typing. And I could keep typing until, as you can see, it's not moving anymore. I'm still typing, but I've hit my 50 characters. So it will no longer allow me to type. I can edit that box. I can delete everything if I want, and I can start again. So the edit box will allow me to have a little small area there that I can type into. The next one is the text area. Click and drag. Right click, object properties. Once again, I can give it a name and the initial value. So what will it see as I just click on it? The style. Once again, you can change types and colors. This is all the same as before. I'll make this one transparent, and I still want to make a bit of a border. So my box here, as you can see, has a vertical scroll bar, which means I can type lots of text in this. I'm going to preview, and I will begin typing. Now, if I keep entering down, that vertical scroll bar will come into play. It will now allow me to scroll up and down so I can keep typing. So if you want people to be able to type on your page, these are two good tools to use. And the last one is a combo box. The combo box is a little bit limited for our use. Let's go to the properties. As always, it has a name. Now for the combo box, the first thing is it can be a combo box, which means we will see one item at a time, or I could make it a list box, which will show all the items. I'm going to leave it as a combo box, and I'm going to add a few combos in. So the item text, I'm going to say page 1. The value doesn't really matter for you guys, because it's a bit more advanced if we're going to use that. And the initial state, not selected or selected. This means which one will appear first. Because this is page one, I could say I want this one first. If I left it at not selected, then the box would just be white until we clicked on it. I'm going to say selected, so page one will appear first. Okay, I'm just going to quickly add in page two. I'm going to say not selected, 
and a page free. Okay. When I preview that, you'll see how it gets its name as a drop down box. We're able to click on the little arrow and choose page one, two, or three. If you want to do a quiz on your page, this could be a good way of having people submit answers. So they could click on the drop down box and select the correct answer. If I go back and I go back to editing and I say allow multiple selections and I'm going to say list box, you'll notice that it now lists all three of them and when I preview I'm able to actually select more than one at a time. And the last thing is once again the style. We can put an image in the background, we could change the color, and we've got our font colors and styles as well. So you can edit that to look however you want. These three items are all about giving interactivity to your user. So having them being able to use your site. If you're going to do quizzes, forms, you want people to be able to type messages to you, these are the tools that you should be using.